Welcome to Salon Talks. I am Mary Elizabeth Williams, and this beautiful, fluffy woman next to me <laughs> is Lily Rabe. She is a Tony-nominated actor. I've seen the Tony-nominated work. It's been incredible. You need to get back on the stage, by the way. Uh, we've seen her in multiple seasons of American Horror Story, everybody's favorite, as well as in incredible recent projects like The Tender Bar. Last time we talked to you, shrinking, all kinds of things. Now you can see her in both Love and Death, which you can watch right now, and as a star, a producer, and a co-director of a new film that is premiering at Tribeca based on the Chuck Klosterman novel. It is called Downtown Owl. Hi, Lily. Hi. Oh my God, it's a mouthful just to say, <laughs> just to say everything you're doing in this one movie. I have so much to ask you about Downtown Al, but I want to start with just the movie itself. Yeah. Tell me about the film, who your character is, and what the setting, what, where we meet these characters. When we, meet. we meet these characters in a, a very small fictional town called Owl, North Dakota. Um, Chuck Klosterman, though, was from a very small Midwestern town, so fictional, but um, I think he was, he was, in fact, I know he was drawing a lot from his experience. Um, it's 1983, and my character, Julia Arabia, comes into town. She is, uh, she's, she's planning on staying just for a short time, and um, she's sort of figuring things out. She's a teacher, and uh, she, she's, she comes into this tiny town. Not a lot of people come into the town. It's that kind of town. It's so small, it's so insular, and forges these relationships um, and everything kind of changes. It's, it's a hard one to give a log line about. There's a big storm that comes um, and that's not a secret because in the book you know it's coming from, from the first page and in our film you know it's coming as well. And that is based on a real event. It, it, inspired by, yes. Right. Inspired by. Uh, uh, based. The, yes, that storm was was a real thing that happened in 1984, uh -huh. right? Yep. Yeah. So this is, it's an incredible, and it's about intersecting lives, and it's about, you asked me what I think it's about, it's about a lot, but it's definitely about these people who are in these liminal moments in their lives, for sure. And it's not just about your character, it's about the way she interacts with everybody in this town. What drew you and Hamish to it? He wrote the screenplay. Yeah. You co-directed it. Yeah. What is it about this book that you had to you had to be this intimately involved with it? So I did the audiobook, I believe, 15 years ago. I was doing theater. I wanted to make some extra money. Um, I was like doing off Broadway, whatever. And uh, my agent at the time was like, "Oh, you you got a great voice. Let's do some audiobooks, and you can make a little cash." And I thought, "Oh, that sounds great." And it was one of the first things that I did. And um, there were three actors sort of reading the different, the three protagonists. And I just had never quite had that experience where every moment of it, I just, I just could see it in a way that felt, um, it felt so cinematic. It felt incredibly personal. I identified with, with all of the characters, particularly with her, but really with all of them. And I just, the tone of it, hit such a kind of sweet spot for me. Um, I felt, I related to it. I felt seen and excited by it. That kind of, I, Chuck has an amazing sense of humor. It's very specific. Um, it makes me incredibly happy. It makes me laugh a lot. And then I find the kind of underbelly of it and the sort of, it's like he has this hidden heart that I'm so drawn to. It's entirely unsentimental but it's there and you feel it and I just I, I I was I just was determined that it had to be a movie but at the time I really I just wanted to play the part I wasn't really thinking I'd never produced anything I'd never optioned anything I, I, I wasn't thinking about directing at that time the rights were not available this is a very long answer but it's a long story it's been many years in, yeah. the, in the making so um, and then I, uh, I found out that the rights were, had been, it had been optioned by someone else. But I wrote to Chuck, I just got his email and I wrote him, I wrote him like a cold email and just said, you know, I did the audiobook and um, here's why I love it. If for whatever reason it doesn't happen and the rights free up again, let me know. Um, 
And sure enough, three years later, he, there was a message in my inbox saying, I've been following your career. I loved, the, I loved your performance in the audiobook so much. I've loved watching you. So if you want it, it's, it's yours. Um, and so then that was the beginning of a whole other, uh, of a whole other road of, of then getting you know, the, the adaptation of it. And Hamish understood the book in a way that um, it was just so wonderful <laughs> because we, uh, we, we, we share a sensibility for sure in all of the things that I loved about the book he, he loved. But then we were a wonderful complement to each other because there were things that he gravitated towards, you know, so it was, it, was, it was wonderful from the start, but at that point we still weren't talking about directing it. He was writing it, I was gonna act in it, we were gonna go out to directors. And it was in that process of like starting to submit it to directors and talk to them that I just kept kind of getting off these calls and feeling, and we were talking to wonderful, brilliant people who had amazing points of view, but something about it just didn't feel like it um, to me. And Hamish really pushed me and said, you, ha you have to do it, you have to do it. I've never heard, you know, you, you, and I was like, well, I'm going to be in it, so will you do it with me? <laughs> uh, and so then that's what we did, and we sort of held hands and, and jumped, and it was a long jump because we, you know, it takes time for the money to come together and the cast and all of the things. Um, and it's been such a complicated time, so dates were pushed and all of that. And then it finally, uh, Finally happened. Well, I was going to ask to have to have kind of a you know an, the force majeure in yeah. a in a movie in yeah. a story that is about this yes. this act of fate that kind of comes along and changes everybody's life, and then you're making this movie and fate intervenes yeah. again to kind of slow everything down. But you finally got to it. What is it? I mean, you've obviously you've collaborated with Hamish for for years and years and years, but this is different. Yeah, this it was. Is, a Massive risk <laughs> for right? our relationship and our I'm children. I'm gonna say we had a lot of friends who were like, "Oh God, guys, I don't know," but um, it was so. It was the opposite. It was so affirming. It was not that we needed it, but it was like this incredible experience. We want to do it again together. We already are sort of developing other things together and talking about directing again. Um, on some things, and I knew we'd acted together so much, and in a lot of it um, in the theater, and then we had done some film and television together, and something I love so much about acting opposite him is that he is so incredibly honest with me, and I know that that sort of seems like, I don't know, it's, to me it's just, it is actually this kind of rare and precious resource because it's hard to find the people who will really, really tell you the truth without um, anything else and for you to really know <laughs> that you're getting the truth and that they feel safe enough that they can say the things that might be, you know, they can really give you notes and they can really say when um, they think you should try something else or something isn't working or just, I love to be directed, I love to be pushed. My, my favorite directors that I've worked with are the ones who, who do that and then, and then give you so much freedom and are hands off when things are, um, it's, you know, it's that, it's that like balance, but we've always had that together as actors. So I knew as an actor, I would feel so taken care of by him directing me. But then the co-directing part of it was this enormous unknown. And um, I think we just both had an instinct that it would be okay. And then it was more than okay. And we, we really, the first time we did sort of like a loose, shot list it was it was just wild because almost every single shot we would sort of start a sentence and it's like well here we won't do what you know oh no it was just we were barely yeah we barely were speaking the poor dp was like I, I need but one sentence you one of you has to finish one sentence i'm just sitting here with my jaw hanging out but like to have that kind of intimacy and collaboration is incredible and it's kind of beautiful because the movie starts with the two of you even it does. though <laughs> so, you know, we even, see, we even, work for like even two though days yeah after, he's yeah. not he's not a central character at all but to have to have that movie knowing the two of you knowing your careers it feels like a very safe place as an audience to start and it was the first scene we shot was the the that scene it's so cute Thanks. It's just really cute. I just felt like this is so cute. Now you've talked about other directors that you've worked with. You've the last time I talked to you, you had just worked with 
George Clooney. Yeah. You had worked with, and it was with Ben Affleck, who was yes. also a director. Yes. Seeing other people making that leap, did that also inform your feelings about doing this? Yes. Yes. Both George and Ben told me to direct. They gave me an incredible amount of, of confidence. Um, then when I was pregnant and I was like, well, I'll have a newborn, they were like, maybe wait so that you don't, <laughs> so that you, so that you want to do it again because directing <laughs> with a newborn. Um, but they were so, they were so more than supportive. They were forceful. Um, don't wait, do it. You have everything you need, do it. And I think that, I think that was a big part of sort of getting me to the final, to the, to that, to that line where you're actually saying, okay, let's go, let's do it. And doing it. Yeah, because it's so easy to, to talk, talk yourself, or at least for me, you know, um, well then maybe someone else should play the part, or maybe someone else, it's really to just say, no, I'm going to do all of it. Um, and then Ed on the ground, Ed Harris, was also amazing, because he's done it where he's directed himself, he's, you know, he's, he's a brilliant director, and he, he just said all the right things to... To, to keep me going and to sort of open me up in ways that we, it was such a gift. Like I do feel like the people who were sort of, that I was lucky enough to collide with on my path, uh, the timing felt really particular and magical in terms of sort of getting us there. And this is not, this is not a little film of a play where it's just two people in a room. This is an ambitious, Movie. This yeah, is an ambitious snowstorm. I want to ask about. Really like I want to <laughs> ask about the snowstorm because that's where I just. How does anyone direct this? And how does any? I mean, listen. Some of the pitch meetings we had, um, where you're sort of talking about a, 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 a you know a movie that you're going to make in a smaller movie, and then you're going to have this massive snowstorm. Um, I can remember some of the faces across those tables, sort of like, what? How? No, that's impossible. But I think the, the reason the storm always felt so possible, and I really do believe had we had, which we did not, but had we had $100 million, we wouldn't have wanted to shoot the storm with a different approach. Because the thing about the storm and the way that Chuck writes the storm and in researching the storm that happened, what we were so struck by was the lack of visibility and the sound and the violence of the sound and the disorientation. And so, you know, it's not a, a, a sort of day after tomorrow, like blankets of snow situation. You are in this kind of, you're, you're like being shaken in the dark and you don't know which way is up and you don't know what's happening. That's how fast that storm hit. Um, and so, you know, not being able to shoot a huge amount of space was was actually something that we we didn't feel hindered by we felt really excited by that that we were limited in our own um, kind of visibility like that we had we had to feel so claustrophobic and tight and um, because the experience of that and 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 the sound of it felt like our way our way in. Right, and then doing that where it's the sound of the storm and it's the sound of these thoughts and it's the sound of, of breath even. Yeah. It's very, it's very intimate. There's that and then the other thing that I thought was one of the better challenges of the movie is you trained as a dancer. <laughs> you trained as a dancer, Lily. You're working with Vanessa Hudgens. I know. Famously yeah. a great dancer. Yeah. And then you do this montage. <laughs> of pretty sloppy dancing. How, yeah. how do two people who are good dancers choreograph sloppy dancing? <laughs> well, here's the thing. We learned that dance. I, she, uh, her friend choreographed that dance for us. And then we learned it over Zoom. She taught it to Vanessa, and then Vanessa taught it to me on the lunch break of the day that we then had to shoot the montage. Um, so it was going to be sloppy. It, it, it works, though. <laughs> and and it, was, it was one of those things that was like, 
a happy accident because at the time I was thinking, oh my God, I wish I'd had more time. I love to dance so much. Um, and I love dancing with Vanessa and I love learning choreography and gosh, but no, we had no time. And um, if we had learned it more, we would have had to end up kind of messing it up. So it was, a, it all aligned. It, it, it's believably it's sloppy. <laughs> it is believably sloppy. I want to ask you about some of the other things you're doing, like Love and Death. You, to me, are one of those performers who I often wind up seeing in these roles where either you are a victim hmm. or an antagonist, you've played both parts, you are often exploring what feels to me these stories of women and violence and sometimes motherhood. Yeah. That feels like a sweet spot for you, Lily. <laughs> What's that about? Is there something about, is it just you wound up sort of going down this road with Ryan Murphy? <laughs> Women in violence years? and motherhood. What, like. <laughs> but now you're in that trifecta. You are in that zone. I mean, you're still doing that. You have, you're going to be in Presumed Innocent coming up. You're, the, this is your sweet spot. What is that about? Gosh, I don't know. I, I, I am, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm drawn to someone um, or something or, you know, a, whether it's a, a role or a director or a, um, I do feel like it shifts and, and, but I have ended up sort of in harrowing situations more than once, certainly. They're starting to feel a little too familiar. Um, but then they do all feel sort of incredible. They always feel unique and they always, I just, I love a challenge. I love a challenge. But I think that that can happen anywhere. It could, it could, it could happen in comedy, do a musical, do a Western. Um, there's no sort of ending up in the Ryan Murphy world and spending all those years getting to play those parts in that genre. It was such a surprise. It's never something I ever could have predicted. Um, but I'm so grateful for it because I think the thing that's so special about it, there are so many things that are, but you know, there, there, there really is no limitation. There's so much freedom and there's, and you're really being asked to be, um, brave, like playing it safe is not really, it's, it's not the arena for playing it safe. And so I think that's why the actors who have come back and back, like we all, um, like that and are drawn to that and um and then in in all of the the projects that you know i've done that probably what is it violence motherhood, motherhood. women women <laughs> um I, you know, it's sometimes it's the director. It's like Susanna Bear could just call me up and say, I, there's this part, and I would say, yes, she doesn't have to finish the sentence because the, the joy that I feel working with her and the way I trust her taste um, is a yes for me. I feel that way about George. I feel that way about Ben. I feel that way um, about Leslie Linkaglider, who I just worked with, you know, where you just kind of, and David Kelly now I've worked with, Three times. Um, I'm a real fan of repeat. You find something good, right? Business, yeah. But I just, I don't like a vacation, you know, when it's work. Like, I don't, I, I have sort of fantasies about how much fun it must be and how nice it would be to kind of, I don't know, go to work and do something and not that get murdered. feels really easy <laughs> and then go home. And that I feel like I would enjoy that for a week, but then I would be itchy. Um, but it's not to say, because I think some of the greatest, some of the greatest challenge does lie in comedy. And it is something I want to do more and more of. Um, so it's not to say, you know, only murder. Only murder. Only, only murders for Lily. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> no. that's good. Although that does seem to be where you're at least heading for your next project for, our, you know, for Love and Death and for Presumed Innocent. I have to ask you one more thing because to me this movie is so much about those, those moments of why am I here? Asking those big questions. And these characters are asking these questions of themselves. Did you have, I want to know what a moment of your life that you feel was like, wow, I was really in the right place at the right time. Mm. I was, I was like, the, well, the moment each of my, <laughs> uh, the, the birth of all of my children definitely felt like that. Um, but also being on the Delacorte stage, I have these 
doing Shakespeare on that stage, often with Hamish, there are moments that I have, that I, so many moments that I have, because there's, there's this sort of overarching experience of it is magic, like it's just magic to do it every night. But because you're outdoors and because you're saying those words, I've had these moments of like, you're talking about the rain and the skies open up. You're talking about um, the wind and it changes and you feel it and everyone with you feels it. And I can feel those moments. There are so many of them from all of the plays I've done in the park. They're like in my bone marrow. They're in my cells. Um, and so I hope somehow they've been passed on to my children just to bring it, like, just to connect the two. <laughs> because I do feel like those moments, they're, it's like this electric shock. And, and, and then I've, I've sometimes had people stop me on the street and say, I was there the night that the, you said this thing and the, that happened. And so it's like, oh, you felt it happened. Mm -hmm. We were all there, it happened. Um, and that's like, definitely the right place at the right time. That's pure magic, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're here and this feels like the right place and the thank right you. time at least for us. Lily, it, thank, you. thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, I'm so happy it's to called be here. Downtown Owl. It's absolutely, it's magic. Thank you. And you started and you directed it. <laughs> you co-directed it. Oh my God. And you produced it. And uh, Love and Death and Coming Soon presumed in us. And thank I'm you. excited for that. Thank, thank you, you, Lily. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you.